In order to upload your local sysprep to VHD files to Azure and use them to spin up new Azure VMs, you're going to need to have the Azure RM PowerShell module installed and connect to your Azure RM account. I've already done this and I'm going to start by having a look at the storage accounts under the shared lab resource group, which is where I'm going to be carrying out the rest of this demo. So as you can see, this resource group has one storage account called TechSnips Images. And this is the target location for where I'm going to send my VHD file. Also note the location of the storage account, which in this case is East US, as we're going to have to create our image in the same location. So let's go ahead and define some variables. Our resource group is that shared lab that I've already mentioned, and the storage account is the storage account we just found. I've also created a container within that storage account called VHD Storage, and this is going to be effectively the directory under which my VHD file is going to live. I'm also specifying my location, East US, as a variable, as I'm going to need it a couple of times. Next, I'm defining an image name. So this is going to be what my image is referred to within Azure. And I'm also using this to define the file name for my VHD file up in Azure. Keeping the image name and the VHD file name the same is going to help me figure out that the two are linked when I find them six months in the future. Next we construct our upload URL and this is a publicly resolvable address for our storage account and we can go down to our container and then the VHD file name that we're using. Finally we're going to define our local path and this is simply where the VHD file lives on my local hard drives. So I'll load all of these into memory and then we can have a look at uploading our VHD. So we're doing this using the add Azure RM VHD command loop. And this takes in the resource group that we've defined, destination URL for where we're sending our VHD file, and the local path. I've also specified the number of uploader threads here. That's because my VHD files are good 7 or 8 gigs, and I'm on a gigabit internet connection. So I've bumped up the number of uploader threads, in hopes of getting a fast upload time. So let's get this running, because it's going to take a while. The first step is going to be to generate an MD5 hash of the file. And this is so that Azure can ensure that the file that's been received on the other end is correct. And once the MD5 hash has been calculated, it's going to start actually uploading the file. And in surprisingly fast time, our VHD file has successfully been uploaded to Azure. So with our VHD file online, let's go ahead and start creating our image. So we'll start our image by creating a new image config object. This is simply specifying the location, which is our East US variable. Now we use that image variable as an input into the next command, and we'll also specify the OS type, this being Windows, and OS state being generalized. What that means is that my source VHD file is of a sysprept installation of Windows. We'll also include the blob URI, which is that destination URL we uploaded our VHD file to, and also the disk size in gigs. So this will be the standard out-of-the-box disk size that VMs built off of this image will get. So we can go ahead and run that command, and then create our actual Azure RM image, passing into it the image objects and configuration that we just created and stored in the image variable, and also specifying our image name and our resource group. And it looks like our command successfully. Check the output and ensure everything looks like what we expect to see. It's been stored in our shared lab and the provisioning state has succeeded, and it's got the correct name, which matches the VHD file that we uploaded. All right, so now that we've got our image, we can go ahead and spin up our new Azure VM. Now, so that everyone else in the TechSnips shared lab understands where this VM's come from, I've elected to call this new VM, VM from VHD, and pass again the image name of the image we just created, and again, specifying the resource group, the location, and I'm also including here virtual network name, subnet name, and security group name. These are all just things that have already been created within the shared lab resource group. And I know that these will work for this VM in that location. For you, you'd need to figure out 
which names apply in your use cases. But we'll go ahead and run this and we'll spin up our new VM. And it looks like I forgot that these need to be provided, but you also need to include the credentials for your local admin account on your sysprept virtual machine. So I'll provide those and our VM should get up and running soon. Right, unfortunately, it looks like I've accidentally used a security group name from the wrong resource group. But if I remove it, the command that should generate a new one for us. So let's give that a try. So I'm back from a little bit of troubleshooting and it turns out that despite my resource group being in a specific region, a lot of the resources within the resource group are actually in a different region. So I'm going to need to specify a virtual network that is actually in the same region. And I'm going to use this one. And we'll give the creation of our VM a third try. Awesome, so our VM successfully been created. We can see the provisioning state is succeeded and that it has the name that we provided, VM from VHD, and the VM ID. So if we go ahead now and run get Azure RM VM, we should see information about our VM, and indeed we do. We see succeeded again, the name, and all that other good information. So now we've successfully got a VM spun up in Azure that we that is based on a VHD file that we uploaded from our local machine. Thanks for watching.